So, hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at starting the weathering process on the oh, I've forgotten the name of it already. On the Fairy Swordfish Mark One, Mark Two, is it? Mark One, sorry. So we're we're going to look at adding some shadow to the. Uh, the undulating surface of the top wings and the bottom wings. So uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can both of them involve masking off. Actually, there's probably three ways you can do it. The first way would be to do it by hand with no masking tape um, and maybe use some oils and create streaks of dark or light along the wings. Um, yeah, you, that might be better in some respects because you'd get uh, you wouldn't get a uniform result. It would be completely random. Um, so, in that respect, it would be better. But I don't think the effect would look anywhere near as good. So, um, you can either pick out where the high spots are and mask them and then spray over a smoke, um, a light smoke layer and then what you'll do is you'll enhance the layers in the, in the dips, in the troughs on the wing or you can mask off the troughs and go over with a light buff over the top um, which is sort of like a sandy colour buff I think if I remember rightly uh, I'll have to get out and have a look in a minute um, so I'm going to looking at that I've started to do to mask off the troughs so um, I'm going to mask off the troughs and I'm going to add a bit of highlight to the top of the wings I'm going to spray a very light coat in a buff over the top that will uh, lighten these top ridges and it will darken the the parts that have been masked off because obviously they won't receive the layer. So you want some very thin tape. This is a 172nd scale model. It's very easy to do. If you've got a good enough light, you can you can see them. Um, you may need a, a torch or something, or even get a pencil. If you if you've got very poor light, go somewhere that's got some good light. And, and just make some light marks where your tape needs to go um, and the pencil should shine this incidentally I should have said goes on after your after your light uh, coat your after your decals and after they've been sealed as well so this will be the start of my uh, weathering phase. Now what I do is I make sure that I cut the tape long enough on both sides so that it can wrap around and meet in the middle on the underside. Because obviously the underside will require the same thing but not as much because it won't have got all you do if any of you are wondering why I've got this um back piece on here it's because uh, I haven't assembled all the pieces yet and uh, without this this keeps falling over because it's only got them flimsy stands to hold it up once everything's been weathered I shall put the assemblies together or when I think they're ready to come together I 
try and use my left hand so that everyone can see what's going on that way. Otherwise I'll keep coming over the top. I should say this has been a lovely little build. Um, I had my first attempt at black basing, which is why it's probably got this mottled appearance all along the top. Um, that should lessen as the weathering starts to go on. And uh, excellent, uh, hoping for good results with this. As I say, it's been an excellent little build from Airfix. Uh, it's not a new tool, it's an old tool. Um, but it's just done really well. I've enjoyed building it. Um, and I don't really like building biplanes, or I didn't. It was just, it was for an FAA group build, and this was the only, only plane I'd got that would qualify. So we've got one that's slightly out there that's going to need redoing. And again, we'll go over the top of the decals. It's the effect still goes over the top of the decals. No change there. Uh, the only places it won't touch are along here. There's a square that I shall tape off because obviously that's flat, and we need to make sure that that doesn't get any spray on it. And there might be a little stretch along here. But uh, I might see about that. I might just spray that and then go over it with some uh, appropriate paint afterwards. So anyway, through the magic of junk cutting, in a minute you're going to see this all done and ready for its uh, smoke. Uh, it's buff coat. So, oh dear, something's happening in the kitchen. I will see you very soon. So, we've um, <coughs> finished putting all the uh, stripes on now. And uh, so our first task is going to be to mix up some paint because as I said earlier depending on how you do this you'll either use uh, a buff or a smoke or you may want to try a colour of your own such as a light green maybe <coughs> um, but I'm going to go with just left a little bit out there I'm going to go with buff. Now the thing is, I don't want to put buff down on its own. It's going to have to go down very, very thin because we want a light dusting. We don't want anything really uh, thick. We're not looking for a, a zebra crossing type uh, contrast. Um, we just want a very light dusting. And it can be very, very easy to overdo this. So, um, we're going to have to be very careful. Now, I'm going to mix up a fair amount because, um, because I use this method um, buff on, on quite a few of my models uh, after I've finished. Instead of keep mixing it up, I'm going to mix up a bit and pour what's left in here. And then I can pour small amounts out without having to... Um... So we'll show you how I do that as well. So, first of all, always use a cocktail stick. Why? Because if I pour this directly into there like that, it's going to run down the side, all down the label, and it's just going to end up a terrible mess. Whereas if I do this, and just pour that in, it will run down the cocktail stick, and into a 
up at the bottom like so we've got a little bit on the side there but we could uh, get some tissue and just wipe that off that also then prevents um, the lids from getting mucky and prevents it from going all gunky around the top so what we've got there what that is should be on there right so now then into this I'm going to add uh, my preferred choice which is Mr. Cover, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner so this is um, a solvent so you'll need a proper extraction and mask on while doing this um, but let's get it mixed up first I've lost the pipette but so let's just Yeah, see, I'm ignoring my own lesson. Use the cocktail stick. Remember, we really want this quite thin. But we've got to be careful. We don't want it so thin that... Um, that it sort of sprays all spidery because if you get it too thin it uh, will be awful to spray fortunately my badger paint mixer has not arrived yet well it's not a badger one sorry I've bought uh, a trumpeter one because it was a lot cheaper I've also ordered some better cups. The problem with these cups is they uh, tend to catch on the bottom and it flicks paint up. So you've got to be very careful. Right, well, I think we've got a fairly good mixture there. But first of all, what I'll do is I'll pour that into here and then we can give it a good shake so I've only mixed up a fairly small amount but it will last me quite a while because again this is not uh, I'm not mixing this up to paint things buff I'm mixing this up as a very very light little bit of paint left on the bottom it didn't didn't mix it too good that's why if we benefit from a paint mixer but with that in we can now just excuse me while I get a uh, da, 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 da. I'll get a mixing ball. Always handy to have one of them about. Box of weathering products. So I'll drop a mixing ball in there. quickly it runs down and starts runs off the sides yeah that's very thin uh, although I think I could maybe get it a bit thinner 
but I'll leave it at that for now and we'll uh, we'll see so the next stage I'm going to take these away so that one of those falling off I'll sort that out later I'm going to give these a coat of spray over the top a fine spray and um, then I'll come back and we'll take the them off and see whether it's good enough or not um, unfortunately I haven't really got a camera set up on the spray booth uh, so I'm going to have to come back after I've finished that and we'll take a look see you in a minute there we have it um, we just turn that off So there we go, the uh, parts have been given a little skim over, I hope I haven't overdone it. Um, I did think at this stage of maybe using a white oil brusher and just increasing the highlight but I think that might be too much. Um, I'm already concerned I may have overdone it slightly. Uh, it's looking very pale, but uh, I can get that back, I think, we'll see. We will see, so... Um, it's very dry, it dries very quick, so we'll start with the ones I've done first. And um, we'll peel off some of these layers and see what we've got beneath see whether we're going to have to do any repair work or not. Hopefully not. Got to find the join first. That's not too bad actually. So it would be lighter on the bottom. So I don't know whether you can see that, that is a light, a very light change in the tone between there and there. Um, let me see on the top side, yeah we've got a very light uh, tone there. Yeah, if anything it might it could have done with maybe a bit more, I don't know. I don't want to overdo it though, so let me just take a couple more off and then I'll give you a close-up look of what, uh, what's been achieved. That's a big one. I'll take a couple off this end just so we can... Uh, I also done the fuselage, because obviously it wouldn't, if you're going to have um, dusty wings, the whole plane is going to be dusty. Decal lifting going on. Oh, that shouldn't have come off. That shouldn't have come off at all. Um, I think I can repair that. I can repair that or incorporate it into the. Uh, Damaged bodywork. My concern now is that it's going to be damage the roundels or the stars. I really don't want that to happen. So let's. Knife. Yeah. There is right on this side. 
Let me get the oil brushes and put a little bit of dark spaceship dirt or whatever it is, just to, or maybe some dark green. So I'm going to carry on removing these and um, I'll come back when they're all done, when they're all removed and you can have a look. So I'll see you in a minute. That's taken longer than I thought it would. Um, so I finished taking the tape off the uh, wings and basically I had a dreadful time. Um, the tape came off okay. The um, as you can see, I got the effect that I wanted. There's still more weathering to go on, so this is just um, that's exactly what I was looking for there. Um, and then you can see on the reverse, it's not as uh, prominent on the reverse, but again, that's the effect I wanted. Now the problem came with the masking tape, which is. Um, I used this stuff, I bought it from Hobbycraft, it was very very sticky, um, I'm working on two coats of Owlclad light sheen I had down, um, the decals had been left for a day and it started tearing them to pieces. Um, I've had to do many repairs, uh, it's took a lot of time. Um, some of the repairs have not gone very well at all and we're going to have a quick look at some of these now so I'm just going to stand so I can see in the top of the camera so basically on this one the star got um, destroyed and I had to repair it come on there we go I don't know if you can see but I had to paint in some white there because the whole middle got tore out um, on this point here um, so that didn't go well if we flip over we can see there's whole areas of black line missing from there and there uh, my choice at the moment is to use some masking tape and spray it back in or to leave the pieces off and use it, um, incorporate it into weathering in some way. Same's happened on this side but nowhere near as bad. And again you can see the effect on the wings, it's exactly what I was looking for really pleased with that uh, this this star went okay the worst damage came to this one um, the whole middle section was torn out I've took a photo of this one um, I managed to I soaked the tape with the with the decal on I soaked it um, and then I very very carefully peeled it away from the tape and uh, managed to get it back on and I think I've done a really good job at that. The only way you can tell is that there's a bit of a smudge on the lines but uh, that's okay because that sort of blended that in a bit, that's great. So. Um, in reflection next time what will I do different okay I'll carry on with the buff or the dark color that's exactly what I want so that is great next time I'm gonna put I'm gonna go back to a full gloss I'd run out of gloss this time which is why I used old clad light sheen um, I'm gonna put gloss on and I'm gonna put instead of just two coats I'm gonna put three or four coats 
and um, I think I'm going to leave the decals 48 hours instead of 24 um, just in case this happens again uh, it was so much stress uh, coming so far and then realizing that it's all falling apart on top of that uh, a lot of these uh, rockets fell off again they're proving to be a pain so we're going to leave that up there to dry overnight then I'm going to whack a load of gloss coats over it just to try and bed them back in let's just have a quick look at the uh, fuselage while we're here and this got a buff spray over as well a general um, so you can't really tell there's no stripes or anything as such it's just had a very light coating of buff over the top we'll pop that in there as well and also the front propellers so they've got a grey sort of dark grey look to them but they were black and it's just had a little buff spray over the top so that's my um, video on um, first stage weathering of biplanes and the ones with the undulating surface on the wings. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm hoping to do more of these how-tos as I learn them. I will give them out as well. Um, What's next? I don't really know at the moment. I may go on and show pigments when I've learnt them and I've still got the oil brushes to come. Um, I don't think it will be this model. It may be uh, later on. So um, Anyway, thanks for watching. As I said, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and uh, wish you all good health and bye for now.